Hi everybody, it's Steve87th here. So today we're going to go over how I took a Shapeways model and made it into a slip form paver. So first, this is a slip form paver from Model Mechanic on Shapeways. All right, you can find this, but it actually comes as a two-part model. So you have to buy both sections of it. So the next step was to go out and do some research to see what this actually looked like when it was finished. So Gamaco uh, actually happens to be the slip form paver and Model Mechanic told us that this was the type of paver that he looked at. Really good sight when you go there. They had lots of dimensions and great pictures. All right, so first thing I like to do with these models is clean them up. So you can see here that I'm putting out the pieces next to um, a can so that I can go ahead and wash them. This is one of two pieces and that is the second piece that goes on there um there's other pieces that come along with it uh those are the arms that will eventually go and then that's the um major piece so this was a really kind of amazing look at this model it's all one shot with some detail parts that are attached to it so um very very fine detail it was really really great right out of the printer. Okay, so the first thing I do is I go ahead and use uh, some 70% isopropyl alcohol and a brush and just clean the parts off. You also notice I'm using a rubber glove. Um, these are some of the smaller detail parts. I kind of kept this one all together uh, as best I could to clean up all the parts. I didn't get everything cleaned, which I find out later. Um, you'll see that in another episode. Uh, as you can see, these are pretty big parts, so it's, sometimes it's just easier to dump it on top of there. And the reason I'm cleaning it, and you notice I'm wearing a glove, I want to get all the oils and the processing films and stuff like that off of it so it'll easily uh, accept the uh, primer. Okay, so um, again, just trying to get into every area of it, uh, it does take a lot of time. So I do a little bit of the editing and the tape so I can start showing the second one. You can see here, there's some delicate parts on these. These handrails are amazingly detailed, um, very, very thin. I wanna get in and we'll get into the walkways and all. And then there are the separate pieces. Those are the actual walker legs that are on the bottom that are attached to it. Um, and just getting into everything and around everything just to make sure that it's all good and clean. Hey everybody, this is Steve87 here, not in my normal place where I normally do a lot of my work at. Nope, I am on the road and um, I'm going to show you kind of how I can work on the road. So this is a standard large Nike shoe box. This is my wireless uh, airbrush gun that I've had already charged up um, and it's ready to go. Got some primer paint here, ready to go. And um, also have some items that have already been washed and are ready to be primed. So I happen to be out on the road. My wife is at a uh, crafting retreat sort of thing. And I tagged along. Problem was the weather was really cold. Um, and I decided 
not to go outside and try to do some rail fanning. So instead, I'm going to paint some models. So I need to surface primer all these. These are all Shapeways models from uh, my builds. So I've cleaned them and now it's time to prime them prior to putting them all together. So, since this is clean, I don't want to get hand oil on it. I want to use a glove. That should work. I still want to test this. Um, on most of these, your first push turns it on for low, low pressure. Your second one will turn it on for a higher pressure. And over here, let's just do a little... See if we can get some flow out of this. No, that's not coming out good. That's not good. Well, the good thing is we do have some thinner that I will thin this out a little bit. It seems like it might be a little too thick for going through. Always want to check first. Okay. Never want to do a lot of drops, just a few drops to thin it out. In this case, I'm just going to use the. doesn't want to play. So we're going to go to an alternate method. It might be better with the paints when I can thin them out a little bit more. Good old Tamiya surface fine. Now you do want to do this in a box. Ideally you'd probably want to put some masking on your face. I have several things to prime, so once I get these done, I'll be able to let them dry for a while. So let's try this. Okay. Don't want to do too much. This could be too heavy in here. Hello everybody, Steve87 here. I'm gonna do some painting tonight or during this, this section. Um, we already primed all of the articles that I had to do, so now we're gonna go ahead and do some paint. And I'm gonna try my new little um, airbrush. Um, one of the unique things about this airbrush, unlike my other one, once you turn it on, it has a constant airflow through it. So this is really only a one stage valve to uh, send out the paint. So you're constantly having air. So um, I'm curious to see how this works and how it works with the paint that I'm using. So tonight's paint that I'm using is gonna be the Mission Models um, for airbrush is what it says. And this is the Farm Tractor Yellow. Um, so I looked at it, they kind of made it a generic sort of it's a construction sort of uh, yellow. I had another paint color that is called New Construction Yellow, 1990 to, to present. Um, it seemed to be a little bit not the color that I wanted to go with. So I am gonna spray them on my background or I'm gonna try this out to see how this works. And I've got a couple of things that I wanna work with them on. So let's just see. 
how this works. Now, according to Mission, you should just be able to put it right on in there. Now, the, the difference on this spray gun that I have here is that it's 30 PSI. So we turn it on. I get no air. I push this down, take it back. Oh yeah, that comes out nicely. You guys can't see it, but let me do it down here. It takes out that whole section where you have to hold on to the air. So that's a pretty nice color. I've got a couple of things that I'm going to paint. Um, so we will try this out. And like I said, this is kind of a good beginner's brush because you don't have to worry about holding it for the air. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and stop and we're going to paint some stuff and I'll be back in a little while. Okay, so now the first set of painting is done. And I wanna apologize because I missed a step that I didn't tell you guys about. Okay, all of these arms that you see here were actually attached with a spur onto the, to the bottom part of the machine. Um, the best way to cut those, they come off really nice and clean by using the cutting, the cutting pliers. Um, you can barely see where, sorry, you can barely see on here. Let me try to focus this in a little bit. Come on, focus. Uh, you can't even see where the where it was attached at, the attach points. You can barely see them here, the attach points. Okay, see one right there. Okay. So you can see those two attach points. Now remember, you only wanna cut off those attach points that were holding these on there. Some of mine were already taken off when they were there, okay? So that's what came on that one. The other items that you need to make sure that you get, which are all on here, are the, uh, the tracked items, right? They were also um, attached to these two bars in the middle, okay? However, on those tracked items between them were the or the the arms that work onto those tracks, which are right here, and underneath those arms or between them was the smokestack and the the oil cap stack that were here. So when you're cutting these apart, just be careful when you take these off that there are parts that are over there. So all of these parts are now taken apart. Everything is off. This is the main section. This is the underbody section. Uh, I believe those all stay, um, but I have to go look. And this simply goes together by putting this on top of here and aligning this brace up into those holes. That's gonna take a little bit of work. Okay, but I wanted to show you guys about the parting out section. So these are all of the parts that you need. And remember, this is two systems that you have to put together. You can buy the upper portion and then the lower portion, but then you get all of the parts that you need to put this together. So next step will be to start doing some detail painting. Um, actually, we're going to fit everything up and then we'll come back, glue it together and do some detail painting. All right, this is Steve87 saying thanks for watching and we'll put this together in the next video.